50s. It'll feel like the 40s. Nicer numbers in the seven day in a bit. Right now, though, right back to Alex. All right, John, thank you. Well, the full city council votes today on a controversial plan to replace Rikers Island. Now, the sprawling jail facility would be replaced with four smaller jails in four boroughs. The council subcommittee voted five to one to approve the plan that will relocate inmates to lower Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx and Queens. The $8.7 billion plan would decrease the number of beds from 7,200 to 3,300. It's still a jail. It's not identifying or correcting the issue of blacks and Latinos being incarcerated and detained at a rate far greater than others. That's the issue. There are people in my community that I've worked very hard for for many years that are angry with me because I am voting yes on this. Well, the plan calls for Rikers to close by the year 2026. Now, today's important vote on replacing Rikers focuses on land use changes that will that really will permit the four new jails to be built. So each borough, with the exception of Staten Island, will get their own jail. The proposed locations will be in Chinatown. We're seeing it, of course, that's in Manhattan, Mott Haven in the Bronx, Borm Hill in Brooklyn, and then in Kew Gardens, Queens. So joining us this morning is Sylvia Hack. She is the co-chair of the Land Use Committee from Queens Community Board 9. So now CB9 voted unanimously to oppose the proposed Kew Gardens jail. So... Thank you, firstly, for being here. I know this is a very convoluted issue. There's a lot of different points and opinions that go into this. How unusual is it really for your board to be unanimous on a it's vote? It's very unusual for a, any community board to be unanimous on a vote. And when you say they're voting today, the city council doesn't know what it's voting on. It's basically been presented with the bulk of the building and the height. And because what's been certified legally in this document, and not to be too convoluted, is flexibility, and that flexibility is for every one of the four jails. And in Kew Gardens, that jail, which they're going to vote on thinking it's 195 feet high without mechanicals, can actually go to 333 feet. And this is $8.6 billion. Two years ago, the cost was estimated at $11.6 billion. And if you estimate that if you have to bond a, course, a, you know, a cost like this, you could be looking at $30 billion. This is a city of New York with 63,000 homeless people, people in NYCHA who don't have heat or, or elevators. And when I came here this morning, there's people homeless in the streets. And yet this is the biggest priority. And they have rushed it through and done something incredibly unusual, having four land use issues all at the same time. So it is, yes, we are angry. We are angry because this is a devastating issue for our communities, for all of the communities, and we had no say in this. They presented us with what's called a done deal. And basically, they said to us, they've allowed us to say, well, maybe if you want the curtains to be purple instead of pink, that's okay. But there has been no real communication. Mm -hmm. And they have violated the city charter, and by this vote, they will be violating the city charter. You read chapter 9 of the city charter, and they are in violation. And you know, you're not the only ones in Kew Gardens that have been speaking out. We have some video uh, of other neighbors of yours that clearly are against this as well. Specifically, what do you think this will do to your community? Well, we're a very small, low rise residential community. So, I think it will have a very chilling effect on the community. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are very multi-ethnic. We're one of the most diverse communities within the borough of Queens. And we're the kind of community where you try to go out to buy a bottle of milk and it takes you half an hour because you meet your neighbors mm -hmm. and you know your neighbors of every, every creed and color and you're in a big conversation with them. And there have been a lot of conversations about I this bet. jail. So supporters of the current proposal say that Riker Islands should be closed because it should be closer to courtrooms, that it's more economically feasible. Firstly, do you believe Riker Island should be closed? And do you buy into that argument? I don't buy into that argument because where you go to court depends on the borough you've been arrested in. So you could be a Queens resident and you would be in a Queens jail. But if you've been arrested in Manhattan, you have to go to court in Manhattan. So you have to be transported to Manhattan. 
1977, the New York Times had an article. There was a riot at the old Queen's Detention Center, which is about a three-minute walk to the courthouse. And they were rioting because a number of people had waited 197 days for a court date. Now, they're only a three-minute walk to the courthouse, and yet they couldn't seem to get them to the courthouse. Look, we believe in criminal justice reform, and we're glad that it's taking place. But there, it's, it's, there are so many mm -hmm. issues, and the, the devil is in the details. So, Do you believe Riker Island should be closed? Well, I think that what Rikers Island has become, which was supposed to be a great place initially, like every other jail built in this city, it has all been pointed out that it was a great new design and a great thing. You have 413 acres at Rikers Island. We have no outdoor facilities in any of the four jails. At Rikers Island, you could build training centers. You could do all kinds of incredible things. You could put a ferry in to get people, you know, closer in terms of, of going there. People who will have to come from far Rockaway to Queens to see people will have an equally long and difficult journey. So would so, those, is that your plan then? Is that what you would recommend to the board? Is like, these are the things that you should do. Update Rikers well, Island, we, change. We could even get, they keep saying the numbers are going down. We have the old Queens House of Detention. Now, that building could be gutted, and it could hold 500 people. And the, the target of the number of people who are going to be detained week by week seems to be coming down, and week by week we hear new numbers. So they are not voting on anything that is solid. In a land use proposal, you normally vote on a defined building. You know what you're getting, and you tweak it before you certify it. We, at least we do on our board. We try to sit down with the developer, try to figure out where the landmines are so that we can have a smooth and easy vote and they have an easier time. I think we have a rendering of the new building that you're discussing as well, just so people visually in their minds can see what you're talking about here. And that drastically, you are saying, changes your community. Yes, it does. It's also this jail will be three blocks from three public elementary schools. And they call Queens Boulevard a buffer, but thousands of people live along Queens Boulevard. It's not really a buffer. So they could do what they want to do in terms of supposedly keeping people closer to their, well, look, these are borough jails. Mm -hmm. So people are not necessarily closer to their communities because we've got a lot of communities in the borough of Queens. And, now, you know, you discuss some alternatives that maybe they can take into consideration as they get together and talk this through. But we wish you all of the best. And thank you, Sylvia, for being here. I know it's a hot topic issue, and I hope that there's some agreement made so that everyone can just enjoy living in their boroughs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Well, the council vote is scheduled to vote at 1.30 p.m. Of course, we'll be bringing you updates as they come in throughout the day. Coming up, we'll have a rundown of this week's forecast. You're streaming CBS in New York. We'll be right back.